Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Joni Young and I'm gonna show you all step-by-step -step how to paint this intuitive fantasy painting today. So intuitive means that I don't have anything pre-planned for this. I've chosen some colors that I like, a uh, size canvas, I think that'll be suitable. And I'm just gonna let my brush and my ideas guide me until I'm completed a painting. It'll be a surprise for me and you both. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm gonna walk you through this step-by-step -step the whole way, the whole process so that you can also paint along with me okay so I've got a 12 by 16 double prime stretched canvas I'm gonna use uh, my number 50 fill refresh to start I'm gonna wet my canvas a little bit and then I'm gonna be using the following colors here and I've got some here already from a painting I did a little while ago they're still a bit wet but I've added some neon yellow or lemon yellow I've got neon pink light olive green sap green dioxazine purple turquoise aqua green cobalt blue, phthalo blue, and some titanium white. Now, because I'm not sure exactly um, where this painting is going to go and what it's going to be yet, I may add a few other colors along the way. Be sure to look below this video in the description box for a full list of all the colors that I'm using today. Okay, so if you guys are ready, let's get go ahead and get started. I'm just going to take a little bit of water on my brush and just dampen the canvas a little bit. This will help take the paint better and everything will just blend together a lot nicer and more easily. So what I'm thinking now is just working on a uh, sky first, the backdrop, and I'm going to pick colors that kind of speak to me that uh, are my favorites. And I like a lot of colors, but I've narrowed it down to these ones today. I'm going to start with my lighter colors first. So I think I'm going to pick up my yellow and I'm going to start applying it uh, maybe here. I might make this my center of interest, the brightest area here where I want like a light source to be coming from, but I could change at any time too. Then I'm going to take pink without washing my brush off and I'll just start working that in. Now I work quite quickly because I want to give this a nice soft blending after with a dry mop brush and I can only do that if my paint is still wet so that's why I'm working quickly but you can take your time if you like and use a little finesting spray bottle to keep your canvas wet and then you can still um, blend it around. The next color I'm going to be using is turquoise. I'm going to take a little bit of white with my turquoise and I'm going to start coming in from uh, the edges of the canvas this time. And I just like to apply my paint in a gentle kind of crisscross brush stroke like this. I think I'm going to go into my phthalo blue next, a little bit of white, and maybe start down here. I get the bottom of the canvas, the sides. Maybe a little bit of dioxazine purple. I accidentally grabbed a little bit of turquoise, but that's okay. Those colors go nice together. So I'm not worried. It's not going to make mud. <laughs> okay, I'll just get the sides a little bit. And I'll rinse my brush out. Before this can dry, I'm going to take one of my really soft, poofy mop brushes. This is a one inch. And all I'm going to do is just start in the middle here. And if the paint is still wet, you'll be able to soften any of those harsh lines. And then I'm going to slowly start blending into the darker colors. And as I'm blending into the darker colors, I'm going to travel over and bring some of that, pull some of that into the lighter ones. So because this is such a workout on my arm, I'm going to switch over to my right hand. I can use, I can go back and forth. I prefer to use my left hand for most of my painting, um, but for certain things. And times I can switch over to my right. So if you guys are confused, I'm a little bit ambidextrous. It just means I can use 
uh, both hands. Okay, so we've got a really nice soft sky backdrop here taking shape. And a lot of you are thinking, how are you not creating muddy tones when you're blending all these colors together? Well, I am making muddy tones in some places purposely because you need those to help balance out all the other bright, colorful areas in a painting. So it's nice to have some earth tones or muddy tones, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so I'm going to rinse this brush off now. And the next brush I'm going to take is a filbert. So let's see here, I've got a number eight filbert. Whoops, sorry, I just bumped the camera a little bit there. I'm gonna get my brush a little bit wet and I'm gonna take some white, a little bit of that blue and turquoise in there, crisscross, pull to load my brush, both sides. And I'm gonna start down here, just creating little scoops, light little scoops like this. So you can do this if your paint is dry or wet underneath. You're gonna get a little bit of a different look depending on if it's dry or wet. So obviously here I'm adding it to wet paint. So it's kind of pulling and blending in and picking up those other colors. I always like that though. That's why I prefer to do it when it's all wet like this. So what I'm doing is creating peaks and some clouds here. So just a little bit of uh, pastel colors, the white mixed with some blue and turquoise, and just little half circles, roughly shapes like this, super easy. You can even scumble around a little bit like this, take a little bit more white. Let's kind of just travel around with our brush and and see how much depth we can create when we go over all these colors. And notice how I'm making different sizes. Like I'm applying some really small ones, little tight ones together like this. And then I'll make them a little bit bigger in other areas. Now, if you're wanting to create perspective in a painting, um, making it look like things are closer to us here in the foreground and far and smaller farther away, then that's exactly what you're going to want to do. So you're going to add smaller and smaller, tighter half circles, or you can just like that, like threes over and over and over again. So even though I'm adding white, it's picking up those other colors that we've got underneath. So we're getting these nice, soft purple tones and it just helps to create a lot of neat effects leading up to whatever this painting's going to be. It's probably going to be a fantasy. It's primarily who I like to paint, though I have a little bit of everything here on my channel if you're new. I have some more uh, realistic landscapes, portraits and animals, flowers, um, but most of the time I'm painting fun, colorful, whimsical landscapes like this where I just kind of have some art therapy and make up my paintings as I go along. So I just rinsed out my brush a little bit. Paint's getting a little bit dry around this area here on the edge. I'm just going to crisscross like this to help blend a little bit. You'll see me using a few different brush strokes. And then a little bit more white. And you can go over, kind of dry brush with a little bit of white over some areas. 
that'll give you even a little bit more depth to your clouds. Make them look softer and puffy. We can always change the color up to can tint our white with a little bit of pink now and maybe just start overlapping. It's just so much fun playing around with color, isn't it? I'm going to bring a little bit more pink inside here, a little bit of yellow, and make a bit of a tangerine color in here. Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit more pink. I'm going to start overlapping. Right, so I'm going to go into that pale blue again with a little bit of turquoise. And I'm going to layer over, creating some more depth here, light and shadow. A little bit more white again. Really like the bluey green tones in here against the hot pink. I think the color just really pops. Now remember that acrylic paint dries a little bit darker. So if you want to prevent that from happening and you like the color as you're applying it, the strength of it, the brightness of it, then add it just a little bit more white and it will dry more to that brightness later on. It's just something about acrylic, it just does that, dries a little bit darker. And it depends on what you're painting over top of too. If you've got uh, a really poor canvas, you might want to prep it a little bit ahead of time with one to two coats of acrylic gesso or primer. So I'm just coming in here and just a little bit more of these squiggles and little scoops. I don't want to try and make anything too neat and tidy, so I want to stay away from perfect scalloped uh, looking clouds. Sometimes I'll have them, but then I want to like change it up in some areas so that it's not too um, perfect looking. So now I've just picked up some yellow, turquoise, and white, and I've got a light, sort of a minty color here that I think will look pretty. I'm just gonna try to get away with all the pastel colors and tones that I can. So sometimes I'm blending and scumbling like this, and then sometimes I'm adding those skinnier. Here, I'll just mix up a little bit more. Sometimes I'm adding a little bit of these scalloped edges. I kind of like to just recommend changing it up and having a, incorporating a little bit of each. That way you'll get a really nice look to your painting. So see the depth we're starting to build up here, specifically in this left corner with that dark underpainting, the purple here, and this kind of lime green, which by the way are very complementary, so that, that does help. And we can come down and add, add some in here. I'm just going to get a little bit of water on my brush, it's starting to dry, and I'll mix up some more. 
Don't have too much water in your brush though, because um, it'll, it'll dry very dull. You're gonna lose the pigment and saturation if you do that. Again, that's only if you're adding too much water. So you really wanna have the paint on the tip of your brush like this. And I'm just gonna play up on this lime greenish color here a little bit more into the blue, in between the purple and the blue. And then we've got some up here scumble out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of white. I'm going to add it right in here. And I'm just going to create some little sun rays. Again, I don't have anything I'm looking at or painting from. I'm just using my imagination and painting spur of the moment, whatever comes to my come to mind. It's a really fun painting exercise and I've been painting like this for oh, <laughs> as long as I can remember, right? It's like when you're a kid. We just did what we wanted with what we had and had fun doing it. It was exciting and I want you guys to get back to that. So I love seeing all of your paintings, by the way, that you're sharing. I'm really proud of you guys, and I'm happy to see that more and more people are uh, encouraged and excited to try painting intuitively. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of that lemon yellow with my titanium white now. And I'm going to add a little bit of it in between. So you really want to make sure that you have equal like enough paint and water in your brush that you're able to leave something on the canvas and that once it dries it's still going to be there okay so like if you have too much water on your brush it's going to um, disappear once it dries and you can just test it out too with having a hair dryer close by Okay, so I think I'm going to have a little floating world here. I've been painting a series of floating worlds lately. If you haven't had a chance to see them, um, they're on Patreon and there's a couple here on my YouTube channel as well. And I'll leave a link down below for those. And you can check them out on my fantasy playlist as well. So I'm going to mix uh, sap green, dioxazine purple. Still using the same brush, number eight, Filbert. And I think I'm going to have something right about here. So I'm just going to start creating a little loop like this, a flat little, like an oval, I guess, or a little pancake shape. <laughs> and I'm going to start to turn my brush this way now. And then just slide, pull and flick up and down. Making it narrower down here. It's like tree roots and earth and vines and things like that. What I wanna do is take a little bit of white, yellow, and the green, light olive green. I'm going to place that on the top. And then I'm going to add another one over here. Well, I've got this green on my brush. Maybe should I add one up top or a little bit lower? Something tells me right in here. I don't know what it is. I guess it's in, you know, that's being intuitive, kind of just trusting your gut. And when you have an idea, listen to it. 
and see where it takes you. Now I'll work on the underneath part with purple, green, and I'm going to turn my brush sideways. Take some more. You can create these little loops. We're gonna have some trees and bushes back in here. We can have some over here on this side. So just adding a little blob, pushing and smushing. Really, that's all it is. Nothing fancy here, guys. I'm gonna take a little bit of purple, green, sap green, on the tip of my brush. Pull in here for some darker edges. I think I'll have a tree. Maybe the tree roots are coming down like this, hanging off the edge. Pull. And then twist. Really exaggerate it. And then have it coming down here. And of course, we'll add some branches on there as well. And then here, maybe we'll have a castle. I'll take a little bit of white and purple. And yeah, let's start adding a castle here. So I'm just going to slide my brush up and down. We'll make some rectangles, different shapes, or different sizes, heights. And then we're going to add little triangles on the top. And of course you can switch over to a smaller brush. any brush you feel comfortable with and I will switch over eventually I'm just kind of roughing this in getting a little idea of what I want here I'm gonna add another one right here I'm starting to see an archway in here that's so cool see that's what I love about painting intuitively you start to see you start to see things out of these little each brush stroke one at a time okay so I think I'll leave that for now and I'll go back to this tree I'm going to switch over to a uh, number two round brush. I'm going to continue using uh, my sap green and purple. And I'll add some branches. Being very free and whimsical with these. Just a light little pull and then a little flick 
for some smaller branches. And then I always like to have a little bit of, well, I shouldn't say always, I don't always, but a lot, a lot of the times I do have a little bit of moss hanging and dripping. I think it just adds um, a little bit of extra charm. Makes these fantasy paintings look a little bit more enchanted, I guess. This is a little bit of green here. So I've got both sap green and the light olive green. Gonna add some here to the tree trunk and the branches. Take just a little bit more of my dark colors. Okay, now I'm gonna come in with one of my little mop brushes. Actually, what I'm gonna do is use one of my smaller filbert brushes. This is by Lerman Decor, it's number 16. I'm not gonna get it wet. I'm just gonna take some purple, light olive green, and some sap green. I don't wanna cover too, too much of the background up because I like what we've got going on there. So I'm gonna just add a little bit of foliage here. And it looks like a little bonsai tree, doesn't it? A few of you guys have been mentioning that my trees look like bonsai trees. I'll have a little bit coming down here. Maybe if there's a little branch right here that we can't really see. We can just see the little leaves on it. Okay, and then we'll add a little something in here. A bit more greens, both greens. And for a highlight, I think I'm going to take a little bit of my lemon yellow, light olive green, and a little bit of white. And we'll just add a few little areas here. So I'm leaving some spaces. I'm not highlighting the whole thing. And again, this is going to dry a little bit darker. So that's why I'm adding it kind of bright now so that it'll show up later once it's all dry. base. And we'll just get a little bit more of that lemon yellow, light olive green and white. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush out now. And I'm going to go back to adding some detail on um, our castle here. So what I'd like to do, just get my jug of water over here a little bit closer to me. I'm going to take a little bit of white, a little bit of greens in there. I always like to tint my white with something, though it might, you might not notice it, you might not be able to see it. It is, unless I've otherwise stated that it's just straight white, like here, just straight white at first. So I'm just going inside and 
the base color is still a little bit wet, which is just fine. It's always a good idea to stand back and have a look at your paintings every so often because we're not seeing it properly. It's out of focus to us. We're just focusing on one thing that we're working on really close up. So you need to kind of just stand back and view it from a distance. Okay, I'm going to take purple and green. Make sure the painting underneath is dry. Where I'm adding or placing my finger here. I place my pinky here while I'm working on small detailed things because um, it really helps steady your hands. It'll give you a lot more control. So I think we have another little one here that we can't really see. It's kind of hiding back there. So I'm just adding this little Curve that's kind of sloped like that. It comes a little bit up and then back down. And then I'm going to add a little line like this. Then I'm going to wiggle, 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 and let go. And wiggle, let go for some flags on the top. Okay, I'm going to take more white. And just go inside. And I'll do the same on the other side here. And a little bit more um, green and purple. I'll go underneath. And in between, just put my finger in there. That's okay. I don't think I wrecked it. And if I did, I'll just fix it. Wiggle, wiggle. It's fun to get those little flags in there. Let's add one here too. Uh, I'll take a little bit of blue with this one. Maybe a little bit more purple, just so it shows up a bit better. And then I'm going to come in and add a little dabs for some windows. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit more green, a little bit of purple in there with my greens. So it's more on the green side. I'm going to start adding some more trees and bushes in here. And a little around the edge there. Add some to the tops of my castle. Yeah, it's neat how you can kind of see like an archway there. So we can sort of play up on that, can't we? Let's go for it. I'm going to create these little scoops that meet from either edge. And we'll create these little floating worlds that have these little entrances or little frames.
I like that. I think that's cool. Okay, I'm going to come in with some of my lemon yellow and a little bit of white. I haven't washed my brush off. I've got a little hint of the green I was using before left in there. Just adding a little bit of a highlight to make it look like there's some light coming from inside there. Always helps to make it look more inviting. I'll take a little scoop of that neon yellow. Add it right there. And I'll just soften this. So a little bit wider there, so I want to kind of come in here and follow that. So I'm using the darker green, sap green, olive green, and a little bit of purple. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit more of my white clean brush. I'm going to come inside. And just brighten up the center here a little bit. We don't want it too, too bright because it's bright through there, the brightest through there. We want these to show up a little bit more, otherwise they're just kind of getting lost. See, this is kind of getting lost in with the green frame. So I can also fix that by adding a little bit more purple so it stands out a bit better. That helps, see? And then little dabs again. Okay, with my number two round brush, I'm going to take a little bit of white and I'm going to just add a little bit on either side of the windows and across the top. You can add as much detail as you want or not much at all if you want just more an impression of what's going on back here. Well, you know, you can do that too. Just leave it as is, but I'm just painting from my imagination right now and kind of just going with all the ideas as they're coming to me. Add a little bit of light hitting this side, make this a little bit more three dimensional. I'm just adding a bit of light on the left side of each one. And then I'm going to add some flowers. So just a little bit of this neon pink. It's going to dry darker over here because I'm applying it over a darker color, darker base. And then where I want it to be a little bit brighter, I'll add some white to it as well. And applying it over the lighter area here will also help it dry a little bit brighter too. I'll take some purple. You can have some purple flowers. 
mix it with a little bit of white, just dabbing. Just a little bit of cobalt blue in there. Bring this down just a little bit lower, so I'm just going to take some of that off. Then go back over with my greens. Let's see, maybe a bit of turquoise and sap green for some cool shadows and vines and flowers coming over here in the front. So remember to change up the temperature of your colors you have. There's cool and warm colors or shades of each color. And it's important to think about Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of white now to my pink. Mix that up. And I'll dab a little bit on here. Maybe just a little bit over here too. Mix up a little bit more and it's going to blend in and pick up a little bit of the blue and the purple. We'll take a bit more both greens. So let's head back over here. I'm going to add a little bit of light olive green over these tree roots. Make it a little bit thicker right here. And then I'll add a little bit more. See how I'm holding my brush? I'm loading it kind of on the full width of the brush here, and then I'm on its side, pulling and dragging a light little scrape. I'll take a little bit of that lemon yellow. Let's add a little bit of white to that lemon yellow. Add some to the outside here too because we've got these sun rays. And we could add a little house in here. Let's go for it. A little bit of purple, pink, and yellow. A little bit more yellow. We'll make a brown color. Make a peaked roof. Paint it in. Then we can take some purple, make it darker, a few shades darker.
and then bring it down along the side here, slope it down, gives it more character. And I'm just going to pull back and forth, make it look like a log cabin or a log house. Take that brown color again. Dab, dab, dab. And I'm going to add a little bit of white. Make our roof show up a little bit more. Straighten that out. Add a little chimney, just a little stick right here. And we can go ahead and add a little bit of white for some smoke. I'm going to add a little bit more white to my roof. I'm going to take straight purple and pull right across under the roof line. And the front as well. And a little bit less closest to us. Okay, and then I'm going to add a door, just a little rectangle, a little window here, one here, maybe something there. Kind of just lost the corner of the house though, so I'm going to try and bring that back. Washing my brush out and I'm going to take some pink, white, and yellow. We'll add little dabs for just a little ball of the paint on the tip of my brush. And we'll add a little dab here, here, and here. Our windows on our house. Take a little bit of purple again and just dab. And we could add some flowers. I'm going to take some purple and some of my pink. And I think I'll add some flowers in here. Add a little bit of white, maybe a little bit of blue in there. A little bit of here. Pink, purple, blue, and white. Okay, then I'm going to take some turquoise and some phthalo blue and maybe we'll have some water falling, spilling off the edge here. I'm 
gonna take one of my little angled brushes here at number four take some white now it's kind of mixed in there's a little bit of that blue in there too I, I like that though I think it's gonna look really pretty I'm just gonna go across the edge here pull and drop Maybe have some coming down from this side as well. Take a little bit of white on there. And I think I'll add some on this side too. Maybe right about here. A little bit of white in there over top. So that turquoise and phthalo blue are so pretty together. It's important to not over blend, so be careful of that. You just want to kind of put it on there and then come over with your highlight. You can kind of shake a little bit like this too because it gives it more of that movement in the water. I'll take a little bit more of each blue, turquoise, and white. And yeah, just have this coming down here. And see how it kind of comes down, it scoops down here? Maybe we'll create like a little pool happening down here at the bottom. So we'll just have these waterfalls cascading down. So much fun painting from imagination. You just never, you never know what you're gonna come up with and what you can achieve. And if you guys wanna follow this painting step-by-step step along with me, be sure to subscribe to my channel, it's free. And I welcome you to paint along. I'm going to take a little bit more of my white and yellow. I'm just going to go with the edge here and just soften the inside of that castle a little bit. And take a little bit more turquoise and a little bit more lemon yellow, white. work most of it out of my brush. I just want a little bit on, on the end. I'm just going to add a little bit more to these clouds and the sky up here. Just graze over the side. And take my blue turquoise, phthalo blue, and some turquoise.
I'll just scumble in a few more peeks. See, they're very subtle. We'll have a little staircase going up here before I call this one done. A little bit of white, lemon yellow, and olive green. And just add a few little lines like that. And have it looking like it's coming over. Right up to the top here. I think I'm going to add a little crescent moon up here in the top. Lemon yellow, turquoise, and white. And then I'll do a few little dabs. Maybe a few little stars. Tap in a little bit of white like this. Tap, tap, tap. I feel like I'm not done with these waterfalls. I'm going to have another one coming down there. See, they're just so much fun to paint, and I think they just add so much, so much more magic to this whole painting. All right, let's go back into what I've got left of that pink there. I know it's mixed up a little bit with purple. I'm gonna come from the top and add a little pink along this side. I'm gonna go in over and mix up a little bit of that white. On the side of the moon. And then I'm gonna take more white again Mix it up with some of that pink. And just get the outer edge nice and bright. Create some little loops. Just make it look like little chains of stars dangling. Okay, I'm going to use one of my liner brushes and just add some sparkles with some white here, a little line down and across to make the stars twinkle a little bit more.
Okay, well, this was really fun to paint. I'm glad I got to share it with you. Thanks so much for joining me, you guys. Don't forget to please subscribe to my channel for more and become a patron. I've got my Patreon link down below where you can join for as little as $5 a month and unlock um, wonderful tutorials, receive postcards, handwritten cards for me, and be part of our monthly contests and giveaways where you can win a mini, a mini original painting like this something similar. So I'll see you guys all soon in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.